All right, Eric Darling here with <clears throat> Darling Data, and uh, I, I heard that you you want to learn about T SQL, so uh, we're going to talk today about uh, views a little bit, and uh, the the more precise context of this will be um, how silly I find it when people uh, stick top one hundred percent in views in order to try to get ordered data out of them. Uh, so. We have that to look forward to. Uh, if you are watching this video maybe for the first time, you might be unaware of the fact that there are a bunch of links down in the video description. All sorts of things that you can do in order to interact with me uh, in, 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 a, in a more, um, let's see, uh, monetarily beneficial way, uh, usually for me. <laughs> But that's okay, because some, someone has to get something out of this. Uh, you can hire me for consulting, buy my training, and court of the, including the full version of this course that I'm giving you tidbits from, uh, little breadcrumbs of on YouTube. Uh, you can become a, a subscribed, paid member of the channel and support uh, the work that I do here. Uh, you can ask me office hours questions, and you can also, uh, should you not choose to uh, accept any of those missions, uh, you can always like, subscribe, and tell a friend. Um, I am leaving the house a little bit. Uh, the nice folks at Redgate have, have chosen me to speak at various events uh, across this fine globe of ours. Uh, the next stop will be Dallas, Texas, September 15th and 16th. After that is Utrecht, the Netherlands. Uh, October 1st and 2nd, and of course, uh, Past Data Community Summit in the Seattle, uh, November 17th to 21st, where, uh, don't, don't forget, I have two days of T-SQL, wonderful, amazing, the best pre-cons you'll ever see with Ms. Kendra Little, uh, so we have uh, lots, lots to look forward to there. But that out of the way, let us go enjoy our T-SQLing here. Uh, I need to go to one of my many SSMS uh, spawns. It's a busy, busy time here at Darling Data. You know, you can usually tell how busy I am by the number of SSM, SSMS spawns I need in order to manage the amount of tabs that I'm dealing with. So uh, here we're going to talk about views. Now, there are two very important numbers when you're dealing with top, and this has nothing to do with uh, some of the stuff that we're going to talk about. But I think that's a neat trick because uh, I used to. What I used to do was. Um, Either have, I used to have like bookmarks. One, one of my bookmarks in my browser uh, is to a Stack Overflow question about um, uh, the about maximum values for integers. And someone very helpfully posted a comment that said, this is the number without commas. <laughs> and put the, the integer maximum in there without commas. So I have that comment bookmarked. And I used to I'll just keep going to that in order to um, find the, the int max for SQL Server, but no longer do we have to do that. No longer do we have to labor under uh, Stack Overflow comment bookmarks. We can, we can do a little bit of math in order to figure out the maximums. Now, sometimes I will even uh, create a view uh, if, I, if I don't have access to things quickly. I will create a view uh, that has all the sort of um, value ranges for the different data types in SQL Server, at least the ones that have valid value ranges. Uh, not all of them do, but um, if, if we use the power function, and we have to use two dot here, if we use two without a dot, then we get an arithmetic overflow error. But if we say two to the power of 31 minus one, we get the integer maximum. And if we say two to the power of 63 minus one, then we get the big int maximum. And this math works out just beautifully for us. Now, the integer maximum was, of course, 2 billion, uh, some other numbers. But the big int max, I was never quite sure what to call that. And this is actually, if you were to say this number aloud as, as, as a, you know, a number to another person, this is what it would be. 9 quintillion, 223 quadrillion, 372 trillion, 36 billion, 854 million, 775,807. Bottles of beer on the wall. Uh, so, well, that, that, that's a, that's an impressive number. But uh, let's look at a couple of things here. Uh, we are going to uh, look at uh, two different views. Uh, one of them has top with that big int in it, right? Uh, with an order by uh, uh, reputation and ID. And the other one has just top 100%. Now, I'm, I'm gonna get out in front of this early. And uh, I'm gonna tell you that 100% uh, of the time, 
when I am looking at a uh, client code and I see views in them with top 100% and some ordering element, uh, I laugh and I realize that probably no, either no one has touched this code since like SQL Server 2000 or people are still laboring under the conception that this does anything useful. Uh, in reality, the optimizer just throws us away. The optimizer says, I, I know what 100% is. Thank you. You don't, you don't fool me anymore. So uh, if we select uh, just star from this top nine quintillion users view, uh, we've got query plans enabled, so we should be able to see all this stuff in there. Actually, you know what? Th this is going to return a lot of data, so let's just look at the estimated plan. Let's just look here and let's see, we have an index scan, of course, of the clustered index. We don't have a where clause. We don't have any other indexes on the table at the moment. Uh, we have a sort that sorts our data. Then we gather streams and then we go into this lovely top operator. And inside this lovely top operator, we will see this top expression of nine quintillion and the rest of it, bottles of beer on the wall. So this works wonderfully for our purposes. It makes, you know, may still not return data in the order that we want without a presentation order by uh, outside of this, but at least we see the effect of the top and the order by in there. When, when I do this, uh, when I get an estimated plan for the top 100% users, uh, we, we lose some things in there, right? We, we no longer have a, a top, we no longer have a sort, uh, there is no anything here. We're just scanning the clustered index single threaded and throwing data back out there which is quite amusing. Now, uh, since there is no order by, uh, or rather there is no sort in here, uh, we are not going to get data in this order, right? There's not gonna be any reputation ID ordering if we, if we return results from this. So um, if, if we say select top 10 from the top nine quintillion users, uh, all our data will be ordered by, I, by reputation uh, and then ID. Uh, if we ask for the top 10 here, we no longer get anything ordered by reputation. The results actually look completely ridiculous. We are not starting with all the reputation ones. Uh, we are just actually returning data, uh, most likely in clustered index order, because we will have uh, an ordered scan of the clustered index. This would actually get us what we wanted, but we need to have our presentation order by outside the view because the, pre the order by inside of the view with the top 100% is completely ignored, right? So that, that, that does us something there. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple things and I'm gonna start these running on the early side because, well, one of them takes a little while to run. So it's a funny story is uh, when you are asking for data in order, when you are saying, hey, SQL Server, please order this data for me, uh, the columns that you select have a very, very big impact on the query plan that you get. And sometimes the query, sometimes if you ask SQL Server to do things with, oh, I don't know, uh, long strings, it could be maxes, could be 4,000s, 8,000s, you know, just, big strings, there are some unfortunate performance side effects. Now, this video isn't specifically about performance, but it's worth noting here that if, if you, when, when, when SQL Server chooses a parallel plan or it needs to sort data, uh, then SQL Server needs to pass that data along in some order or another. And when you get long strings involved, all of a sudden you clog up your parallel buffers with these long strings and, and you need to now sort data uh, by some columns, but you need to write those long strings down. I've said this before when I've done videos about how SQL Server orders stuff, but an easy way to conceptualize it is sort of like when you have an Excel file and you click that magic button in the top left-hand corner of Excel and it highlights all the columns and all the rows, and then you say sort, and then you choose a column to sort by, and sometimes SQL Server will be like, uh, you, you, should I, you really want me to just sort this one column or should I choose everything, right? But when you choose everything and the entire spreadsheet flips into the order of this one column, that's a little bit like what SQL Server has to do. It has to flip all the results by the column or columns that you're ordering by. And that requires memory. And the more, the more, you, ha more you have to sort, the, the, the bigger your data is that you have to sort, the bigger of a memory grant you're going to ask for. But the, the memory grant doesn't really help those parallel exchange buffers. So we, we have two queries here. Uh, one of them 
is just select the top 10, and we have a list of columns. And the second one is uh, selecting the top 10, but we have something new in here. We have this about me column, and this about me column is, is a max data type, right? This is an invarcar max column. The, the, the first query does not have that about me column. You'll notice in here, uh, between uh, ID and age, uh, there is nothing, right? So we, we did not have about me in this one. The query where we leave out the about me column finishes in about 2.3 seconds. Mm, not bad. Uh, if we come over here, and I'll, actually, let's go look at the memory grant real quick. All right, 1423 MB, so about, uh, what, what is that? Uh, 1.4 gigs of, of memory, right? Maybe, maybe good, maybe bad, I don't know. I don't have a big feeling about that. But if we come look at this, this sort operator over here, you'll see the order by, right? So this is like in the Excel file, these are the columns that we chose to do the ordering by. And then this, these are all the other columns in the spreadsheet that, that SQL Server had to flip to match the ordering of the, these two columns, right? So this whole big long list here. Now, when we come look at this query plan, we will see that there are some differences, right? So, I mean, you know, sure, that, well, that took about, I mean, that's not too far off, right? a few milliseconds. Uh, the sort here, well, this one takes about twice as long. Uh, but, oh boy, here we, here we get to our parallel exchange buffers, and we're at 22.5 seconds here, and this is, that's a big jump in time from one to the other, right? There is not a big jump in time from this one to this one. This one gets to like 800 milliseconds, okay. Right, and then uh, we get to this top here, and this top is uh, whatever, and you know we add a little bit of time on this top, but now uh, look at the difference here. Okay, that we go from we add about a second, right? So we go from 9.61 to 1.9 there. So we get, add about a second to this one. This one we go from 22.7 to 45. Right? And this is just because we added in that max data type column. And now we've got these cluggy exchange buffers. They're very clumsy. And then the rest of the plan, not much time gets added here, right? There's about another, I don't know. Well, actually, I mean, the, the operator times are a little squidgy in here, but we can, we can forgive a few milliseconds of that being wrong. And of course, the memory grant for this query where the about me column is included is 10 gigs. Now, this is where I start to have feelings about things, right? I do start to have feelings about 10 gig memory grants. 1.4 gig memory grants, you know, you can take or leave those. 10 gig memory grants, this is where I start saying, ah, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe we have some, maybe we have some things we need to think about. So, uh, short story, top 100% in views with order by, does nothing, the optimizer throws it out. There is no joy there. Top nine quintillion, the rest of that number, right? Remember this thing up here? Uh, that will that will get you uh, at least the, the data to um, come through the query plan in order. You still may need a presentation order by in order to have things returned out to you uh, in the in the order you expect. But um, there's that. And then also uh, when you're when you're selecting data and you you want to order data, if if your the the query plan that you get is tremendously slow, well, mind your data types. Right? Mind the columns you're selecting and ordering by. Uh, there are definitely techniques out there in the world to, say, get the top 10 rows that you're interested in, and then maybe join back to the base table to get the rest of the columns that you're interested in. Uh, and that can, that, those can be very useful in cases like this. But if you're not familiar with those, well, my rates are reasonable. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. And I will see you in tomorrow's video where we, we will learn some more things about T-SQL and query plans and all the other inevitable stuff in the world. All right. Thank you for watching.